Good afternoon, educators and administrators that have joined us. Um, hope you all are doing well. Um, for those who do not know me or new faces that I'm seeing, my name is Ari Lawson. Um, I am one of the Career Exploration Program Managers for Vitalink. Um, and then with me today, I do have my senior director, um, Ms. Meta Era. Hey, everyone. And Thank you, Nana. And then um, thank you all for joining us for the Culinary Arts and Hospitality Advisory Board. Um, as you're on screen, please be sure to mute yourself. I know some of you all may have busy backgrounds and may still be in class. No worries. And then once the panel discussions begin, um, please turn your cameras off. This will help us highlight the speakers during their session. Um, and for check-in purposes, uh, please make sure your first and last name are on your screen or on your frame. So as you see mine or the representatives that are on the screen as well. Um, if you need to update your name, you can hover over your name in the participant column, click more and then rename. And for check-in, please add your first and last name, uh, title, school name or school district that you are working with. Um, this is the list that we submit and share back with your district so they were aware that you did join us today. Okay. All right. And for those who don't know or might have missed it, Violent had a complete facelift. Uh, that's right. We do have an entirely new link uh, and logo completely at the top uh, with Vitalink. We've officially dropped the OC, we believe in expanding, which we have officially expanded into the Inland Empire. Uh, we do work with a school or two in Los Angeles County. And our goal, of course, is to target and reach more students um, Southern California, uh, throughout Southern California. Uh, we have also our new email addresses. So some of our emails might be going to your spam folders. <laughs> Uh, so please be sure to check your spam um, and you can check with your school district to make sure that our email domain, which is now vitalink.org, um, is considered white listed. Uh, so that means our emails will go to your inbox and not your spam folder. And then also with our updates, we do have our brand new Vitalink website, um, which is everything is a click away. Uh, we've, we've taken your notes over the years. We've completely thrown them into perspective now. Um, so for example, for this advisory board, um, you click about and you'll see advisory boards and CTOC. Um, so you can register for any advisory boards that you are interested in. Um, and of course, for next school year, we'll have more updates down here. Um, so you will know beforehand. Um, we also have our programs laid out. There we go. Um, by the specific um, focus point. Um, so whether it's academies, competitions, or pathways, you name it, we do have it. And if you're open and have ideas for a different program, feel free to contact and bug my director, uh, Ms. Meta, and she'll be happy to work with you and your administration team. All right, and then some upcoming events and some um, notes on the events that we've just finished. Uh, we are officially in our competition season. Um, just last Saturday, we completed our annual Energy Invitational. We were officially back on ground with over 200 students registered. Uh, we did have a total of 26 teams registered um, and schools from Foothill High School, and CAMS, that's California Academy of Mathematics and Science, all placed first, second, and third. So congratulations to them, or if you know any educators of, of those schools. Uh, we've also completed various career fairs and we are officially in summer academy season. Um, so if you're interested, or if you have some high school students that you know need to be busy in June, <laughs> feel free to contact us. We have um, a regional drone, uh, I'm sorry, regional drone academy um, that are partnered with local Orange County colleges. Ned, would you like to share a little information on that as well? 
Uh, sure. So our regional drone program is for all high school students. It takes place over four days between five college campuses, Fullerton College, Cypress College, Coastline College, Santa Ana College, and Orange Coast College. And our goal is to get the students familiar with the world of drones, what careers lie within it, and how to get started on your FAA certification because you guys can get certified at age of 16 and they can start their own job if they would like. We've had students that get certified and start their own um, realtor photography classes and uh, work spaces and they make money over the summer for themselves. And so the classes are there at the college and we want to make sure the students take advantage of that. And so if you are interested in registering your students for that, please give me a call or um, email me at netta at vitalink.org and I'll put that in the chat in case if you have it. Perfect. Thank you so much, Netta. Um, and then also on today's itinerary, we will have a representative with us for the college panel um, from Saddleback College sharing about the updates um, for culinary and or hospitality. And then we have a great group of representatives um, that work directly in the industry who are going to share about what your students need skill-wise and the updates. Um, you know, companies are officially opening back open, so they're going to be completely honest with you on what your students can expect. And then, of course, we'll have a final Q&A session. So before we get started on the panel sessions, um, I do have a website or a couple websites actually to share with you all um, that have benefited us throughout this school year. Um, so first, we do have Program Finder. Can everyone still see my screen? OK. Um, so first, we do have Program Finder. Let's see. Yes. OK. And then um, this website alone has helped us over the school year with being virtual. We're officially back to hybrid now um, and going back on ground. Um, but if any of your students are remaining virtual or hybrid and they're looking for ways to find programs that interest them at a local college or high school, uh, we encourage them to use this website as much as possible. Um, it will show them the various pathways that are based in Orange County schools. Um, so, for example, when they click Hospitality, Tourism, and Recreation, um, they can identify which program they're eager to learn more about. And after making that selection, here we go, um, it will let you know which colleges or which specific high school districts have those programs. And then so they can hover over, oops, here we go. They can hover over and identify which school district and then after clicking that section, it will let them know, there we go, um, which specific school. So this is also a great tool for parents um, that might want to transfer their students from middle school to a high school. And then the next website we have, have been using is Talent Ed. Um, this is a great tool that I've been encouraging educators to use who might wanna have a representative join or come to their class to talk to their students. Um, so, for example, when they hover over retail, hospitality, and tourism, so we go to it, there we go. And then a full map will open um, all the way at the bottom. <laughs> you can scroll down. Let's see. There we go. And one more. There we go. Industry map. And so these are all businesses. Um, they're well aware that they're on this map. They're eager to speak with you and your students. Um, so if you're looking for any representative in retail, hospitality, tourism, or related careers, you can narrow it down by clicking on which um, term um, and then all the way down to which city you want the representative from. Um, and you can let them know you found them on Talent Ed. Um, this is a, com a company and website that's put together by Ezri. Um, they are also an educational um, company. Uh, they've done a lot of research to look for industry professionals. Um, they are excited to share more with your students about what they need. And I'm sure they're a little bit more skilled in updates um, <laughs> as far as what's going on post-COVID. Okay. 
All right. And then I do have a brief video to share with everyone here. So I'm going to make sure that my sound is sharing. Okay. My name is Brian Knurk. I am Department Chair for Culinary Arts and Hospitality Management. Community college students graduate with opportunities at every level of restaurant management and culinary. Most of them, if they choose to go into culinary, are going to become line cooks in restaurants. It's an entry level position, to be honest. But what a community college education does is it gives them the opportunity to fast track, to get to that next level, that management, that sous chef faster than if they were to try and work themselves through the ranks. A lot of my friends want to go on to be executive chefs at high-end restaurants. Um, some of them just want to get out in the culinary field and see how far they can go, working in kitchens or, you know, fine dining. I am aspiring to be a personal chef, where I go to families or I cater events um, that, you know, customers will call to ask me to specifically be a chef for. The classes that you would take at a community college in order to become a chef or a line cook are going to range from very basic introductory cooking, how to hold a knife, how to grill, how to roast, how to saute, to introductory baking and pastry and more advanced classes as you're making pastas and making your stocks and learning how to cook for a restaurant. Additionally, they're going to learn the management side because this is a business. They're going to learn some marketing. They're going to learn purchasing and other aspects of actual running a business. This program is so great. They teach you from beginning to end. You don't really have to come in here and know how to slice and know how to cook. You don't even necessarily have to know how to boil water. The only thing I think you need is a desire to learn. What's very important for graduates who go into this industry is having a good attitude. And if you put the effort in with a good attitude and some basic knife skills, you can be successful. I knew I loved to cook, but I didn't know I really enjoyed it that much. I didn't know it could be so fun. I come here every day and I'm almost upset when it's time to go home. Seriously, I, lo I love to be here. I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Okay. So thank you all for joining us. Um, for those who have just joined the call, please be sure to check in to the Zoom chat um, with your first and last name, title, school name and or school district. Okay. And now we're gonna start our college panel. Um, so I'll ask if you are not a college panelist to please turn your camera off. This will help us highlight the representative that is with us as she shares her information. All right, thank you all for joining us. Hello, Ms. Lisa Inlow, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Thank you for having me today. Yes, thank you for joining us. I know you have so much exciting news. I did see that you shared um, a web link in the chat. Feel free to share it again uh, for any educators that might've just joined us. Um, but I'll ask if you can introduce yourself um, and share as much as you want about your department um, and how is it going this school year? I know it's been a lot of changes. Yes. Um, so my name is Lisa Inlow, and I am the department chair at Saddleback College for the Hospitality, Culinary Arts, and Travel and Tourism programs here. Um, yeah, it has been a very exciting year. Uh, we started out um, online. Uh, for about the first three weeks, almost a month, I guess, and um, then transitioned back into face-to-face -face classes. Uh, that was a, a really welcome transition. We were all just so excited to have our students back face-to-face. -face. Um, it was still a little weird. We had to wear masks in the classroom. We couldn't do any tasting in the beginning. We had to take all tasting outside, so that kind of complicated things. But now we are back face-to-face -face with no masks on. Um, and so we're back kind of like to our, our normal. Um, I have to say the one thing that, that really um, we took away from the pandemic and being forced online is it really encouraged us to um, tighten up our distance education for our students. 
and it's created a better program moving forward. Um, we were very lucky in the beginning stages, just by happen chance, we had this technology being installed into our um, classrooms, and it was um, cameras that would follow us around the lab, and it was basically for demonstration purposes, um, but it turned out that we were able to record um, using that, and so now all of our lecture and demonstrations have been recorded and are online. And, and that's been, actually turned out to be a real win for us in that students can view these demonstrations over and over again now. Um, and we don't have the cost associated with the, you know, the purchase of those items for every single class. And then also we can play it in class, like especially like last week we were doing uh, chicken fabrication. And so that one's kind of tedious. So that was kind of cool to be able to put that up on the screens. The students got to watch it at home. Um, so I, it's really, an, we, we kind of, we made lemonade. <laughs> from all the lemons that were thrown at us um, over the past couple of years. Um, so I, I'm very excited about that. That is great. Um, I know it's been a lot of hard work and all educators have been bouncing back. I, I saw a comment in the chat from Ms. Elise Hernandez. She said, this has been an odd year for sure with not being able to allow students to taste or eat food in class um, for more than half the school year. So I know they are definitely relating with you on that. <laughs> Um, so I do want to ask you, um, specifically for your department, can you explain what skills students are learning from your programs that they're taking out into the working field? So um, we have uh, four different certificate programs and they're all stackable. Um, the very first one is the food certificate program and that is just real basic skills. Um, it's, let's see, how many units is it? Let me take a look really quickly here. It's 18 to 20 units. Um, and so what we cover in there is safety and sanitation. Uh, we cover introduction to culinary arts, which is um, lots of knife skills, um, mother sauces, the basics of, you know, baking, roasting, grilling, braising. We even do a little bit of sous vide in there. Um, there's also a basic baking class that's just like, you know, real, you know, pies and quick breads, that type of thing. And then there's also a sustainable meals class in there, which we teach students how to grow food in the garden and then bring it in and, and cook with it. So, and then from there, we build into um, other certificates. So like I said, there is four total. After the food certificate program, we have a uh, basic culinary arts, and that is all of the classes that I just mentioned, plus just a couple more. And those couple more are just a little bit more advanced. Those classes, we have a cooperative work experience where students actually work into the industry. And then we have another class that prepares them for their um, internship uh, that has a lot of soft skills and kind of 21st century uh, workplace skills, and then how to also write a resume and introduce themselves. Um, and try. The idea is that they find their own placement, but if students struggle, we have lots of industry partnerships, and so we are able to um, help find them placement if they need help doing that. Um, so many jobs out there, I think everybody knows that. Um, the industry is desperate. Um, and I think really what they're looking for at this moment is um, soft skills, uh, good attitude. Um, and then we're, we're trying to partner with them and help them get to where they need to be by um, teaching. Like they're gonna, they're at this moment, literally, I think probably most of you on this call know, like they're taking a warm body. Um, but I think the one thing that this has done for our industry is it has really made our industry understand that they really need to step up and pay these people. Um, and I, that it's happening. Um, and we are trying to work out, and I don't have this in place yet, but an apprenticeship program where we will partner directly with industry partners and they will um, allow their, their employees to come to school one day a week paid. Um, which I think will help bridge this gap. Um, there's also um, scholarships that we are working on. We just did um, last 
well, it's been, been two months now, a uh, table for 10, which is a huge charity event. And we raised over $50,000 for scholarships for culinary arts students. Um, so lots of little things that I think the pandemic um, has done to the industry, kind of shaking it up a little bit and making lots of changes that I think overall in the end will be a good thing. I know it's a real struggle right now, um, but I think overall it's going to be really beneficial to our industry. It's going to give it more longev longevity um, and be a little bit better of a match for, you know, uh, our students going into the industry. I think they're going to have a better experience. Very good. So you had mentioned um, a little bit earlier that students are now coming back. Everything's kind of in the swing of things. So are you seeing for this upcoming semester is now more in person or is it still majority hybrid? And then how are your students handling those changes? So we are 100% back face to face now. Um, summer will, will be 100%. There'll be no online. Um, so that is good. Uh, like I said, we have held on to the tools that we created and that has, has enhanced our, um, our, our students' learning. So that is really exciting. I'm sorry, I lost track. What was the rest of the question? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you answered it. Um, okay, yeah, good. <laughs> you answered it perfectly. Um, and so that goes in um, to question number four. So for the students that are coming into as incoming freshmen, incoming college freshmen, um, what soft skills or what techniques are you wanting from them so they can be successful in your courses? I would say the most important thing is uh, being timely. Again, all soft skills. We can teach all of it if we have the right attitude. So showing up to class on time, um, a, a real struggle this semester is having them do their online homework. <laughs> so that would be nice if they had those skills already coming into the college that they're, you know, comfortable with Canvas, comfortable navigating that online because we do um, utilize that as a very strong tool um, for our courses, more so than we ever did in the past. Um, and then just having, uh, you know, a can do, I'm here to have some fun. I, I really wanna encourage my students to embrace their passion while they're there. Um, I came from a, um, a, pr a private school education and um, I was not given a lot of liberty as far as creativity goes. It was, you followed the recipe that the chef gave you. Um, so I, and, and that to me, that was a little bit um, stifling part of the time. So once my students have demonstrated that they have the skill set and they understand the fundamentals and what I do encourage them to get creative. Um, so I think that that kind of sets um, our classes apart a little bit from some of the other programs where you, you know, you're just supposed to follow the recipe uh, because that kind of sucks the joy out of it. Um, so I, tr I try to make sure that everybody is engaged in the classroom. So we have all different levels. We have like super basics, and then we have students that are coming you know, from industry trying to get their certifications. I think it's also um, real important to um, engage each of them where they're at. And that's not always the easiest thing to do in a classroom where you have a lesson plan in place. And so we work really hard to make sure that we are challenging all of our students. And it, 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 uh, it have something in our back pocket kind of thing. So once they've mastered this skill and they're ready to move on to the next because the whole class is not at the same level, I have something else that I can give them. But lots of knife skills um, in all of the classes because that's really what the industry um, wants to see. And then just trying to kind of boost these students up to keep them engaged so that they do want to pursue a career um, in the industry. So Lisa, I want to add in a new question. Um, I know you mentioned a lot of industry and the techniques that they're needing. So for the resume wise and interview related, um, do you all solely work with students to make sure that they are interview ready once they're foot out the door? And then how do you get them interview ready? So we do have a, an online class that, that teaches interview skills and um, resume building, um, all of that type of thing. Um, 
in the past, we have had panels of industry experts that come in and we have sort of like a restaurant day where our advanced students are making lunch, serving our panel, and then, it, and then the, so they get that practice because we do not have a regular running restaurant at Saddleback. So we kind of just squeeze it in here and there wherever we can. But then this, we, we use this as a Q&A. So each industry partner can talk about, you know, what it is that they're looking for um, at that time and what skill sets they want to see in the students that are applying. And then our students have an opportunity to actually interact and talk to them. And then after that, we have about an hour of um, time where everybody can just kind of mingle and it gives the students a chance to have a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But that has been really successful and really engaging um, for, for our students because it kind of, it really gets them ready um, for this, and they're hearing it straight from the industry partners. Very good. And then um, I do want to add in also teachers, if you all have any questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself or put it in the chat and definitely add into the discussion as you see fit. Um, for Ms. Lisa, I did want to ask also, are you seeing any um, dramatic changes? You know, now we're post-COVID, I'm seeing commercials. I'm sure everyone is seeing commercials of, you know, stores are opening back, restaurants are coming back, amusement parks are coming back. Um, how, what are you seeing and are your students like jumping the gun to, or are you encouraging them to jump the gun to go ahead and apply to those restaurants? Well, that's kind of a, that's kind of a double-edged sword. Um, because what happens a lot of times is when we encourage them too much, then we lose them and they don't come back and finish the education, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm really wanted to develop this apprenticeship program um, where we partner. Um, I do have that sort of relationship with a few of our industry partners already, and, so, and that is really useful. Um, talk, having the opportunity to talk with industry and um, share with them um, how important it is to them and to us to partner together to build this sort of pipeline of students. If we work together, I think that this could be a huge win for, on both sides. But what happens a lot of times is they get a job and then they don't come back. And there's no way to really control that. Um, what I like to do is I like to have them get a job in the industry towards the end of the program. Um, we do have a lot of industry partners constantly sending emails to us. We have this um, program called Handshake on campus, you know, for the whole, all of Saddleback campus, which, which um, partners our students with spe specific industry and jobs that are good for, good for, you know, students that are flexible. Um, so that's been a win. We have, we're, we're low enrolled right now. We don't have as many students as we had before. Um, even the transition from this semester where we started out online and then coming back to face-to-face, -to -face, we still had a few students that we were required to support online, even though classes were back um, in person. So it's been a really delicate, you know, balance. Uh, but, but industry has been really supportive. Um, I've gotten a lot of really positive um, feedback from them. And I, th I think it's going to be a really great moving forward. We just kind of have to get back in the groove and hopefully encourage more students to enter into this industry because um, COVID really did devastate the industry. Um, but like I said, I believe it's coming back stronger in the end. It's just going to take a little bit of time um, and work with the industry and education. But I do think industry sees the value in, in the education part of it. So I think, I think it's all going to work out. It's just going to take a little bit of time to get our footing. Very good. And then so you mentioned that um, the industry is eager and they're willing. So I do want to ask you, because I know a few teachers have always looked for representatives that might be open to come talk to their class. Would you have any suggestions to the teachers that are here um, on who they could contact or what locations they could reach out to um, to maybe have someone either Zoom in or come to their class and talk to their students? Yeah, absolutely. So I have, I'd be happy to do, if you have students that you feel are am interested in coming to Saddleback, we, I do do field trips occasionally if the Zoom 
with this, the Zoom is amazing. <laughs> I'm at home. <laughs> it's so nice. Um, I'm sure you all feel the same. Um, so we could certainly schedule something like that. Um, if you're interested in having um, industry come and talk to your classes, I have I have lots of connections and I would be happy to share um, any of that with any of you um, who are interested in having maybe a chef come in and talk um, to your classes or head of HR or something like that. I feel like they're all really eager to do that. Awesome, awesome. I hope that does help um, the educators that are listening. Um, and so then I do want to ask, um, I'll jump to uh, question number seven. What advice would you give any high school students um, right now before they do enter your college programs? Well, again, it's just so much about having a good attitude. Um, another thing that I like to tell my students is you almost learn more from your mistakes than you do your successes. So never give up, just keep trying. Um, if you're gonna make a mistake, the classroom is where you're, is the best place to make it. Um, because we're here to mentor you and nurture you and help you. And actually learning how to fix your mistake is a huge um, asset to you because it's not, it's almost better if it happens that way. Because uh, we can help you show you how to recover from it or fix it, either one, but developing those skills. So just basically having a good attitude and, and being on time. I feel like that's a big one. You know, we always have those couple students that just can't seem to get that. <laughs> um, I wish there was a solid way, if anybody has any ideas of a solid way to train them to do, to, you know, to get there on time, that'd be great. But um, timely and good attitude is, you know, my, my best advice for preparing yourself because we can, we can teach you all the rest of it. Very good. And then um, for the educators, I know right now, um, you know, they're ending their school year, but I guess for next school year, what advice would you give them um, in maybe anything in their curriculum they could add in um, that would better prepare the students um, um, knowledge-wise, like if they need to come in and kind of know the basics before the college basics? Sure. Um, I would say knife skills are real important, um, proper knife handling. Um, also, um, understanding measuring. That sometimes is a real struggle. Um, just the difference between dry measure and wet measure, that type of liquid, you know, liquid measuring. Those are really important skills. Um, understanding how to navigate the, on, the distance education. I don't know how many people here are utilizing um, Canvas or Blackboard, but that is helpful at the college level because everything that we do is housed in Canvas and um, Blackboard. And while we do have a lot of support, it's nice if they understand how to navigate it so they don't get frustrated. Um, and then we did have a teacher mention in the chat that her school uses Canvas too. Um, can you share a little bit more how you might use Canvas in case some other teachers only use Blackboard? Um, we, we used to use Blackboard. They're very similar, not a lot of um, differences. Um, in our classroom or in my, in my uh, program, um, we, we've got like four tabs at the top. We start with, you know, kind of a basic understanding of what is going to be happening during this module. And then we go into um, a PowerPoint presentation and usually the video of the demonstration that we're going oh, to be that's true. You look, you look. <laughs> And then um, I, I, part, I don't know if any of you partner with Pearson, but we use on cooking textbook and uh, Pearson is a good resource because they have a lot of um, quizzes and tests and videos embedded. And so those are embedded into our Canvas modules too. So students understanding how to navigate that is really beneficial. It, it is on, it's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, there's always a few that just really struggle with that. Um, but basically that's it. I mean, they're very simple. There's not a huge difference. I didn't have a heart. I am not tech savvy at all. Um, and COVID kind of made me become tech savvy and the transition from Blackboard to Canvas happened like right before that too. So we got thrown in, but it, they're, they're very similar. Not, not much difference there at all. Okay, great. Um, so I do want to open the floor um, to the educators and ask if you all had any questions. Um, we did have a question come into the chat as well. Oh, was someone speaking? Go ahead if you if you are. 
um, sorry, Ari, this is me. Lisa, I heard you talk about being interested in starting an apprenticeship program. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? And so just so what your vision and your ideas for that, because I think that's something that more, multiple um, culinary departments across the region can benefit from. And then um, that way, Badlin can also learn from it and then maybe help you start on that. Yeah, so my, my the idea is, is to have um, industry partnerships and have industry actively participating with curriculum development and actually come into our classrooms part of the time um, and talk to our students, um, give presentations, that type of thing. Um, ideally, they are going to financially help support some of these students and that can be done. I, it'll, that'll probably have to be like a case by case because not all of them are gonna be prepared for that. Some already have in place, a lot of the hotels already have in place a tuition reimbursement, which is really nice. Um, recently, I was speaking with another um, uh, Marriott and we talked about the possibility of them sending their employees that need help with you know, knife skills, um, sauce making, those types of things, just to help develop a little bit of speed and understanding. If they could come to school one day a week as part of their 40 work week, and I don't know how many will be on board for that, but um, I have a little bit of interest right now. Um, I'm still trying to get this off of the ground. I think it'll probably have to be um, based on a case by case, because I don't think across the, I don't think we'll be able to set up like a model and have everybody agree to it. I think it'll probably have to be a little bit individual according to, you know, the, the different um, types of HR departments and how the business organization, you know, wants to handle it. But I do think it's viable um, and I do have a lot of interest in it. Um, we, I talked about it recently. Um, I met with a group of chefs. Um, I think there were about 20 different chefs from local restaurants a couple of weeks ago um, at a, a pre-planning meeting that we had for our Table for 10, which is um, our charity organization where we're raising scholarship funds. And it sounds like everybody's really interested, but still working out all of the details with that. That sounds wonderful. I know that's something that would be very useful for the students as they prepare to become on their own in the workforce. And so having that apprenticeship is something that, if, at least from my conversations, always comes to mind for manufacturing only. I'm like, wait, there's other sectors that could really benefit from apprenticeships. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Um, and speaking of which, so are you, you had shown the, the talent ed website. And so I have been um, active in helping with um, create that and working with um, that group of people. I think that that tool will also benefit the apprenticeship because there are there is a, a click in there where students can find internships. And so I think that will help kind of like tie everything together uh, once we get that a little more um, solid. Definitely. Um, and then we do have a hand raised, Ms. Sheila Dufresne. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm a regional director for employer engagement, for those of you that don't know me. And so I work in a regional capacity connecting our colleges and our, um, our businesses together. And my area is regional hospitality and tourism. So I've worked with Lisa for a few years now, and she's great. And I'm, I'm always hearing newer and more innovative things every time I talk to her. So I just had to weigh in on, on the apprenticeship model. Um, there is so much funding coming down from the state and even the federal government for apprenticeship. And we all know that, you know, the toughest nut to crack is the workforce development aspect, especially coming through COVID, you know, with the workforce that's so decimated. So I just wanted to commend you for designing and thinking about a program that innovative and just a quick little anecdote. Um, I sat next to a um, uh, the head of baking at Disney at Cypress College's um, advisory board a few years ago. Obviously everything is always, you have to qualify it by a few years ago. Um, but I asked him, I said, okay, so tell me, I have, you know, I have a way to get to the faculty at all the colleges in Orange County. I need pearls of wisdom. Tell me what our students need to know to work at Disney. What is the number one thing they need to know? And he said, you know, obviously all the basic skills are great and that's a great foundation. And he goes in the subtleties, I'll teach them here. He goes, but what you have to let 
everybody know and every instructor anywhere know is do not be afraid to spend extra time on the basics. Everyone's in such a hurry to get ahead, but the basics are the very core of what we do. And he said specifically what Lisa mentioned was measurements. He said, you know, people are a little math math phobic these days, but you have to go back to the measurements because I can't teach them how to do a calculation in their head when they're working with recipes. I can teach them how to, you know, mix the sauce differently or whatever. So I just wanted to reiterate what, what Lisa had said and how important that is. And then just on another level, um, I, I would love to um, be able to go through the other um, culinary arts and hospitality programs that we have in the county. Um, and just offhand, you know, for those of you that are in the Cypress College region, there's a great program there. For those of you that are near Orange Coast College, where I'm housed, we have a great program there. And then at Santa Ana College, same thing. And what the beauty of it is, is they all work pretty collaboratively together. And typically on these calls, we have a representative from each of those programs. And they all have, you know, the students' interests in mind at the heart and the core of what they do. And I just encourage you to explore the offerings at all of those programs as everyone's bouncing back from that virtual only setting. Um, we have a new, a brand new building at Orange Coast College. Um, Cypress is right in that Anaheim tourism corridor. Saddleback is very well placed down in South Orange County where there's a tremendous amount of resort hotels, really high end resort hotels, and they're always having trouble hiring. So even some of your high school students, you know, for summer work, there's, there's more opportunities. Um, we ran across an article from the Cal Travel the other day that said high school students are filling some of these job gaps. So um, we encourage you to, you know, especially if you have students that are interested in hospitality and, and culinary and they're not working in the field yet, uh, that's, that's a great experience for them. And then Santa Ana, I would like to just give a shout out to them. Tiffany Hermans is the, is the department chair there and she came from the K-12 side in Santa Ana Unified. She is young and has lots of energy and lots of great innovative ideas and the program is very new. So we have a little bit to offer everywhere, everywhere you, you, set, you think of sending your students. And I encourage you to keep supporting our programs and keep developing our relationships. And then on a personal note, I, um, I am leaving my position on June 30th because our funding cycle is over and we knew about this six months ago. Um, we're funded by workforce and economic development money from the, the chancellor's office at uh, in Sacramento for the community colleges. And so we, um, I hope to be involved still in some capacity um, with these educational uh, workforce related efforts. And it's been really wonderful working with all of the people on the call that I know. Take care. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Sheila. Um, we, you actually did get a question in the chat. Um, so uh, Julia, please feel free to unmute in case I um, butcher your question. Um, but she was asking for Ms. Sheila, are you open to having uh, students come and tour the new facility? So, and then um, which facility? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm pretty sure she probably is talking about orange. Oh, I'm, I'm muted. Hang on. There we go. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure she's talking about Orange Coast College's new um, new center. And yes. they're, they are very open to this. And actually, in the last few months, we've had several path, culinary pathway days. And so I'm going to put an email in the chat of Elaine Devlin. And she's the woman at OCC in the career ed office that handles all the scheduling for the pathway days. And um, a couple of them, uh, we did one for Newport Mesa the other day or a few weeks ago. And um, we've done a few other colleges. Uh, I mean, a few other high schools have come to visit. And they're, they're really pleased to be able to have that outreach opportunity and show the students um, our new facilities, okay? Very good. Um, and then I wanted to ask if any other representatives had any other questions for the colleges. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Lisa. Um, before we get our break, I do have a quick last minute video to share, and then we'll start our break in a moment. Um, quick sound. Here we go.
My name is Angela Bustos and I'm pursuing a degree in hospitality and tourism management. My passion is hospitality as a whole. So I will find myself working either at a winery, uh, but the ultimate goal would be planning events. The business side of the program is very complete and the program itself has a class for hotel management. It's a great class. It helps you understand what goes behind a hotel and how to manage it. The business classes are so important. You take business communication, marketing. On the hospitality side, you have hotel management, you have the restaurant management. It helps you to get really into what it, it is like. The finances, all these things that sometimes when you only work in the industry, you're, you know it happens, but you don't know how. If you have an education, you will be a step ahead of other people trying to get the same job. Okay, educators, thank you so much. We're now going to go on our 15-minute break. Um, please do not log off. Um, if you'd like to come off camera and network with the other educators, feel free to do so. Uh, we will reconvene right at 4.01 p.m. Thank you all so much. All right, great. Thank you so much, um, educators. Welcome back. Um, hopefully you can still hear me. You come back to your computers or make sure your volume is loud enough to hear us. We do have a great group of representatives here with us um, from various locations across Orange County. Boom. All right, um, so first I'll start at my talk with Christine. Uh, please share where you're from, your title, and a brief background about your service and your company. And I'll go down. Thank you, Aurea. My name is Christine, everybody. I'm with the Great Wolf Lodge here in Garden Grove, Anaheim. I'm the director of sales and catering. That's it. Great, thank you. And then next we have Jen and Jonathan from Embassy Suites. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jonathan Phillips. I'm the director of rooms here in the uh, Embassy Suites here in Santa Ana. <laughs> I had to think which one I'm in. Now. Right. Well, you were in yeah. Korea earlier today. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and um, as I said, I'm the director of the front office, and um, and I'm sorry I'm gonna have to cut out everyone because I've got a big check in today. But um, just that was it. Just yeah. I'm okay. Jen. I'm the human resource coordinator here at Embassy Suites. Sorry, I think you're on mute. Of course I'm muted. It's been only two years. Um, next we have Dara. Hey guys, how are you? I'm Dara Malecki. I'm the founder of the Pizza Press. Um, I was excited to be a part of this panel uh, and, and, and be able to share and, and be with a lot of you CTEs. I actually just started my CTE with uh, Orange, uh, Orange County School of Arts. So running the entrepreneurship program. And uh, so I'm a uh, I'm excited to be able to share some industry knowledge, but also to let you guys know that I feel you, I'm with you guys. So I just finished up with a, a group of seniors. So uh, my first time back in high school since uh, 22 years ago. So here we are. Oh, thank you so much, Dara. I know the teachers definitely relate with you. Um, and then last but not least, we have the flesh. Hi, my name is La Flesh. I'm with the Holiday Inn in Buena Park. Um, I'm the director of sales, and I've been at, in the industry for about 15 years now. Thank you, La Flesh. <laughs> um, okay, and then, so we're going to get started on to our industry questions. Um, and so I'll stick with Jonathan and Jen first. Um, so we are considered almost post-pandemic. So I want to know, um, as you just said, you have a huge crowd that just entered your hotel. Um, so are you seeing major consumer increases recently in your um, in your industry? 
Uh, yes, we have. Uh, in this market, um, because we are, you know, I guess 20 minutes away from Disney. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of sport, sporting um, activities going on because we see a lot of groups, volleyball, um, sure. swimming, and also music. the music, the music groups. And it's, it's a lot of activity going on in this market. And this is my first uh, tenure in this market. Uh, six months ago, I came out of the LA market. So, but this is a very interesting marketing. So I see a lot, a lot of travel here from all over the country. And the airport space too. Yeah, in the airport. Yeah, you're exactly right with the airport. So, yeah, it sounds like you all are right in the heart of the busy, the busy area. <laughs> um, so I asked Lafleche as well. Um, are you seeing your um, your location be impacted by large groups? Is and then is it helping or hindering your company at all? Yeah, ever since like um, California opened up again in June, it was like an explosion of travel. Um, mostly domestic travel. Um, the international travel has not yet come back as we'd like it to be, but that was, you know, forecasting to be like a, a good two or three years. Um, there's still things going on with them with COVID testing when they go back to their country. So um, mostly domestic. And yes, I agree. A lot of groups that are traveling are sports teams, um, music groups coming to perform at Disneyland. So we're in the OC, the center of Orange County, which is Buena Park, about five miles from Disneyland. So we are seeing groups and leisure travel. So that has come back, definitely. Corporate travel um, and international is still kind of flowing in, but not, not as it was in 2019. Okay. Um, and same question, question for Christine. Um, I think same with us, uh, for our hotel, a lot of vacation, a lot of uh, moms and dads just getting out of their house. So we've been really busy. A lot of our clients right now, I would say, are 90% uh, local. Um, and then, of course, we get a little bit of the Disney. We're only about two miles away from Disney as well, too. So um, it, it's just been really crazy. I think we've surpassed our 2019 numbers. Uh, the moment that um, California, I mean, at least Orange County opened, everybody just wanted to go out and have fun. So. Okay, and then for Dara, I want to jump into the next question for you. Because um, sure. I know that with restaurants, you are opening tons of people, but we've been hearing that, um, and I'm sure guests are seeing it, that you, more restaurants are getting that digital guest experience. Um, where they may be pre-ordering their food online or right at the table. They have like the little screen gadgets or handheld and to keep a kid busy playing games. Um, are you seeing that, is that keeping your restaurant popular? And then is that affecting at all any hiring processes for new employees um, since companies are now going more digital? Well, I think the, one of the biggest challenges that restaurants have, and, and just to go back to the previous question, I mean, we're, I also run a uh, food and beverage for the Anaheim Hotel, which is literally right across the street from Disneyland. Um, Anaheim just recently hosted one of the largest conventions um, a couple months ago with Expo West, which is natural food products. It was a phenomenal event. It really uh, ignited the area. I know uh, some of our friends on the line. Um, and so you really saw an influx of, uh, you know, that, that corporate travel, and it was good to see it back and, and actually back in Orange County. So the, it really shows the resilience of the, uh, of the resort area and, uh, and, 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 and how it can, it can come back so quickly, especially since a lot of that business went off to Vegas and other states that did not have the restrictions like we did. So it was definitely exciting to see it back. And then the events, um, you know, of course, mimicking the others it, it was a lot of cheerleader competitions um and and other types of uh of travel and sports travel so great to see it back um but to your question that you just asked um the digital ordering it was definitely a problem when we were coming back online and having guests back in the store so it was it was trying to balance all that business you built digitally during the pandemic and then bringing it back and having customers come back in store and then just getting actually staff 
back accustomed to seeing the customer on the other side of the counter. That was actually a really big challenge. And it really is a back to basics training. It, you know, customer service was something that truly, I think, took a hit. And then currently, given the fact that we have an, a, a, an inflation issue, um, you know, I, I think the guests are expecting a lot more for their money and, it, you know, they're definitely seeing costs go up. And so it's definitely adding more challenges um, for your generalized staff. So, uh, you know, definitely from one crisis to another, but we're, we're, we're getting, it's the new normal. Um, so I do want to ask, um, I'm going to open the question to the floor. Are any other uh, representatives that are with us, are you all seeing your hotels um, kind of get, a mass hit on customers or consumers where you may not have enough employees and what can we do or what can educators do for their students to prep them to start working with you all? Uh, yes, we're seeing that here at the embassy. Uh, we had a job fair, what, a couple of, about a month ago? Yeah, and, um, and we, had, we had some interest there. We had probably about 27 uh, applicants of, interest but uh when it came down to showing up we only had one just or two yeah. yeah one yeah sure. just a few that, that showed up so um you know post pandemic i think um restaurant from some of the restaurant gms that i know uh in the la area that i've spoken with and also in the hotels we've got hit very very hard and i think what we have to do as managers, HR um, coordinators and, and representatives is to kind of get out to the schools to kind of start some kind of, um, I guess, marriage between these young uh, inspiring students who don't know what they want to do. And I think the hospitality is a great way to to channel that in um, uh, because I've had in my career in 28 years, I've had, um, I've worked with schools in the LA, in the LA market. And we've had kids that come aboard and, and that have started out in hospitality and they left us for the nurse, for nursing. They decided, oh, I wanna be a nurse. I had one great story, a guy, he told me, he called me years later and said, hey, you know, Thank you, Mr. Phillips, for everything you taught me about um, uh, conflict and resolution. He says, it helped me when I became an officer at LAPD. I promoted quickly because um, I could go in and uh, basically redirect and diffuse a lot of situations from some of the training that I got uh, when I worked for the Marriott. So, um, I think if, you know, these, this is great that we're on this and that HR is involved uh, here, our local HR is involved in this and, and that and we could be a part of this because there are a lot of kids, even my own 19 year old daughter, she doesn't know what she wants to do. She's, she's gonna be accepted into USC and God, I'm so glad she went to, to a JC <laughs> the first two years. <laughs> so she's going, she's moving in the fall to uh, USC. But, um, you know, save me a lot of money because she doesn't know what she wanted to do. She worked at Ralph's for about two months and said, I hated it. And I said, well, girl, you know, you didn't have to work. You could have came to work for me. But she's like, I'm not working with you, dad. So, you know, that's so it, it's great that we have programs like this that we can help um, meet um, the young mind that's indecisive where they want to go and what they want to do with their lives. And. Uh, it's so many great opportunities in the hotel uh, business from um, supervisory and um, uh, sales coordinators. Um, entry level. Um, in a, entry level, yeah. So it's, um, it, it's, it's definitely a win-win for all that's involved. And, and I can, and, you know, I've had so many great success stories uh, where people have went on and they went into management. Some went on into other industries and have done very well. Very good, great words of encouragement. I know the teachers definitely appreciate that. Um, I do wanna skip over to question number four. 
and I'll start with LaFleche. Um, so from your entry level employees, they might be coming right out of college. Um, what specific skills or um, degrees are you wanting from those um, employees um, that you need firsthand at your hotel? You know, um, I have my degree in communications. I started at the hotel while I was in college because I didn't know what to do, what I wanted to do. And once I started here at the front desk, I feel like what Jonathan said is totally correct. Um, the main thing that I think that any person wanting to work in the hospitality industry is having communication skills, knowing how to communicate, be personable, talking, um, just like Jonathan, my sister was a server while she was in nursing school and she graduated, became a nurse. And she says, oh my God, it's just like a glorified server. I just have to take care of my patients, just how I took care of my tables. And, um, I feel like that's the number one thing in this industry. And it teaches you so much because if you're personable, if you know how to talk, if you can communicate, then you can be in this industry. You said that perfectly. Thank you. Did anyone else want to chime in? I'm sorry, I love that one. Because I feel like communication right now, coming out of pandemic, I'm talking to some students when I help them on a tour and it's like I'm pulling the words out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so hard for kids because they were, you know, alone for like two years. My kids yeah. were, you know, on Zoom and they're on the tablet. And, you know, a lot of the kids coming out of school, like technology is like the thing, but they haven't gone out and they haven't, you know, chit chatted. They haven't gossiped. They haven't, you know, and that's a, a really important thing to learn. Mm -hmm. So I feel like once you have that and once you practice that, because you can practice it and get better, mm -hmm. uh, that's like key. You know, I'll, I'll, LaFleche, and I agree with you on that. I think one of the largest things that people can do, and it's, it's not just at college, but even at the high school level, yeah. I know a lot of parents don't want their kids to go to work, just focus on school. But, you know, in this current job environment, it's, it's in, there's so many opportunities for an age group that has been excluded out of the work experience, especially in hospitality, restaurants, uh, and even retail right now. It's important that students that, you know, may not be scholastic and may be lost in what they're looking to do, give a try in serving someone else. And that's retail and restaurants. You know, it's interesting as we get into our careers, we find ourselves serving others more and more than we ever thought we would. Um, and then as we get into our personal relationships, we're, we're serving others and then we're serving our children. And, you know, those are vital skills that we can learn at such a young age that drives that communication and makes people even more successful as they enter into college. So it's so important. Exactly. I agree. This is... I'd like to piggyback on that one. That's like a hundred percent on point, Dara and um, LaFleche. But I also wanna, and I always tell this to people, right? Um, in in coming to the hospitality industry, I think um, I always tell them all you need is a certificate from the patient's university, right? Because all you need is patients in this industry. Um, but the good thing about it is all the skills that you learn when you're in the hospitality industry. Not only do you bring it with you with your other jobs or in your but it also brings you in your journey in your life because you know the way you talk to people whether you know you're in your job or just at home you know understanding some people in regards with you know how they talk to you and then how it, like you could easily tell what they need anticipating what they need uh, just a quick a, a quick story my uh, co-worker actually is um, a high school student who happened to actually give her mom flowers and she found out that the mom wanted tulips only because she said, quote and unquote, you know what? I What I've learned in this industry or what I've learned being a bell captain is actually trying to hear and not just keep on talking, just trying to hear what they're trying to say. Now, she actually learned to hear that the mom was trying to tell Actually, the mom already told him a couple of times that he wants the tulips, but it's only now that he actually kind of heard it. So he gave her tulips for Mother's Day, and she was so happy. That is so sweet. So active listening. I, I definitely understand that. I've had to, like, work on it myself, and I think that is, like, one of the strongest tools, especially coming, like, from, like, 
young age, right out of school, we definitely have to work on active listening. I'll say it myself because I'm in that age range. So I definitely get it. <laughs> um, Christine, I do want to stick with you because um, I know you were talking about um, kind of seeing the success and Jonathan and Jen kind of mentioned it. But with the young uh, graduates that are coming into the workforce, what do you encourage students to have on their resume um, and how can they come interview ready um, to the interviews? Um, what, what do you want from them? You know, that's a very good question. We just did a hiring fair two days ago, right? And what I, and for us, we actually hire high school students. So for the teachers that are here, we are, we hire high school students. We have water park attendance, retail and all. So um, I think I want people to go back to the base. You know, something as simple as when you come for an interview, it's not going to be flip-flops. I don't care if it's a Nike flip-flop, you know, I, you know, it's still a <laughs> flip-flop to me, you know, wearing a jersey when you're coming interviewing. Again, yes, I know it's an expensive jersey, but, you know, when you're going to an interview, something as simple as a press shirt, you know, press pants. You know, I'm not even asking for black shoes, which I think growing up we were, you know, I would go for... My position, I, I was a, I applied for a waitress position and I came on full on office suit. So now I think it's a little different and I'm aging myself, so I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but I'm not saying to go full on. I'm just saying, just go back to the basics. Make sure that you're presenting yourself there as well. And then um, answering questions as simple as yes or no. Because if somebody uh, answers me yup and answers me on the middle of the interview, I think we just need to kind of bring that back a little bit in regards with, you know, um, how to talk to people. And then my favorite, favorite, favorite is the one which I learned from my former, former boss. He said, Christine, on an interview, there's no such thing as I don't know. There is, I don't know, but let me find the answer for you. That's always going to be your statement. And I think if those three, three basic things is something that we could kind of bring back, I think that will go a long way. Uh, Jonathan, I saw you agreeing. Thumbs up with suits to the interview. My dad would say the same. I have to hear from you. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm aging myself. I've been in this business for 28 years. And we used to wear the shirt and tie. I mean, I, I got my tie off today because it's a lot of stuff going on. But um, but when we went to interviews, he's laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 dress and 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 if if there are high school teachers on educators, please. When that student is talking about um, coming to a job interview, can we just put on a if if we just got a pair of black slacks and a white shirt or navy, sh or, you know, a blue shirt or something, you know, I mean, I, I, I agree. I've had folks come in with Daisy. I had a girl come in with Daisy Dukes for a job interview. And I mean, that is not the time that we're in. Uh, some people will say, oh, well, it's just the times. These kids, no, that is not, that's totally unacceptable. Um, I had a guy come in, look like he just left the basketball court. And then I pulled him to the side. He had a very nice resume um, from, from the collegiate. He had went to a JC and went to college. I forget what school he graduated from, but he came in like he just left the basketball court. And, and, and of course I pulled him to the side and had an, had an opportunity to find out what was going on with him. And, um, and then, you know, he was a little short and can't change and he was out here by himself. His family was back east. He was trying to get a job. I said, well, you know, you can go to Goodwill and get a pair of pants for like a buck and a, buck and, buck and a quarter or something like that, a couple of dollars and a shirt. And he did, he went and bought a suit for $5. I said, listen, come back tomorrow and Bring your resume because your resume is very impressive and um, just suit up a little bit. He went to Goodwill. He told me he went there. He found him a suit for $5 and got him a shirt, got him a nice pair of shoes, came in, gave the guy an opportunity. And he, became, he actually came in entry level as a guest service agent and promoted 
to our uh, night audit position. And then he became an assistant front office manager. And he did all this within about a year and a half. I mean, so, you know, I think from the high school educators, if we can just, and even some of the junior colleges, if we can just, when they come in for an interview, just be prepared, be prepared, not just on paper, but, you know, appearance and is everything my father told me. The presentation when you walk out and I took him literally, I used to wear suits to high school. And, you know, <laughs> y'all laughed at me. I did. I had a suit on every day. You know, I wanted to be always professionally sound, like my dad said. The appearance is everything. And um, and that that opened a lot of doors for me um, coming up through the years. Um, so um, that if, if I, yeah, I, I agree with, um, I believe it was, was it Christine? I agree with everything she said about that. And I'm going to have to run. Uh, I, I would love to jump in again when you guys do this again. Hopefully we can do it on a, uh, like a Monday or Tuesday. Towards the end of the week, us hotel people is very, very busy. Now, but, please make note of that. <laughs> yep, and they're calling me right now. <laughs> okay, thank you so, so much, Jonathan. Up. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. And Jen will finish up. No, I have the interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do want to throw the next question um, to Dara. Um, it kind of goes based off also the success for students. Um, so what suggestions do you have for high school and college students that are looking to gain an experience? They're finding the trouble, of course, you know, the double-edged sword. You have to have experience, start the job, but you can't start the job without the experience. Where do, where do, you, where do they go or who can they job shadow or who can they volunteer with to get that experience? Yeah, I mean, well, I, I think we have the educators on the on the line, right? At, at, at the universities or at the JCs uh, or the community colleges, you've got um, track programs that you can go to. Um, you know, there's you know whether it's business administration, management. You know, I mean, it's always try to try to focus your studies on on what you can do. I think when we're looking at high school, it's you know get your grades up, get them to a good spot so that you can get a work permit. You know, if you're you know it's 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 the struggling kid, it's the C student that the A students eventually are going to work for. So I mean, you know, they, you know, don't count them out as educators. They're special people. Um, you know, I know, and I, I, I've had to work with some IEPs and stuff like that back in my day when 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 I went to school, you just didn't have that. Um, but there's so many great programs. Uh, as educators, we're always trying to find the ones in the room, and and it's always exciting to cheer them on. That, that what college they're going to, whether it's Purdue or or something great. But there's always someone in the room that's you know chosen to take a year off before they go to college, and we have so many of those right now, guys. And you know, it's pulling those kids aside that are going to take the path less, uh, you know, less traveled. You know, preparing them. Um, with skills and some encouragement as they step out because, you know, they, they, they kind of hop out and they're like, well, I guess we're going to figure it out. And, you know, there's tons of opportunities. They just have to commit. Commitment is everything. You know, I, I left high school not knowing what I wanted to do. Um, I, I bounced around from jobs, figured I had a good knack for sales, worked in that industry for a while, built some confidence and, you know, before I knew it, I was, you know, started a small business, that business gave me enough money, sold that business, started a restaurant business. And, you know, I've had phenomenal success, but it was a road less traveled. And when I started, I was insanely insecure. I didn't know which way I was going to go. I saw all my friends in school, four years graduating, getting great jobs. And, you know, I was just still working my way. But, you know, after about six to eight years, after high school, we were starting to catch up in opportunities and the wage gap was quickly decreasing, but it's, it's a road less traveled. It's very difficult. So, you know, realistically work permits, uh, if they're in high school experience, 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 but find your way for your first job. Like there's, there's no wrong place to start. It's just starting. So whether it's washing dishes or cleaning rooms at a hotel uh, you know, you learn the most in the kitchen, right? I mean, I think where I usually find myself when I am working, uh, at, you know, not in the office, but I'm in one of my locations, I usually stand and wash dishes because you, you, you see everything happening and you hear everything is happening inside the restaurant. 
and uh, you know, you're able to get a good gauge and, and have a few conversations with people. Awesome. Yeah, you know, to speak off of what uh, Dara just said, that's perfect. I was going to say, um, maybe you can't find an internship, but you can find a job uh, working at an entry job at, as a housekeeper, because in this industry, you can move up. Like my front desk manager, he started as a housekeeper. He went to front desk. He's now a front desk manager. My GM started off as a dishwasher. This industry is so, it's based on moving up within the company, learning different fields. If you know housekeeping, if you know the restaurant, you know the front desk, I mean, you're just golden because the more departments you know, the more you can help out and the more you can move up. So if you can't find an internship, find a job that's hiring, even if it's housekeeping or bell captain or front desk agent, take the job. And while you're there, then get to know everybody and move up that way. I like that. That's very well said. Christine. Yeah, I, I just, again, um, uh, actually, just quick, quick um, update. Um, if you haven't been to Pizza Press, please order the Tribune. It's uh, <laughs> my favorite. So, anyway, um, yes, on point. Um, even if, uh, for example, one of the things that I encountered for, for the educators that are in here, I actually want to, I, I want to give this question back to you guys. How can we help? Being in this industry, how can we help you inspire or how can we help you educate or maybe teach your students to be a part of the hospitality industry? You let us know and then maybe we could work together. And then I'm sure LaFlesh and Dara and Jonathan and Jen will be more than happy to kind of, let's all work together and see what we can do for you guys. I mean, I don't mind going to your location or doing a Zoom class for like a day teaching you guys, I don't know, a software, opera, I think opera, if you learn opera, maybe like an eight week session or something, you're going to be golden because you, once you know opera, there's so many hotels out there that already knows the software. But again, let us know, we are here for you. We are in this industry because we believe that this industry not only helps out a lot of starting students, but also the people that are already up there in the leadership. So let us know. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Christine. You jumped ahead, but you're good. Thank you. Um, so I'll ask um, the next question to LaFlesh. What final advice do you have for educators who are preparing students for this industry? Um, I guess I just have to fall back on my what I said prior is communication and kind of confidence. Any way you can do to pick a kid up and, you know, give them that extra boost to actually just go out for the interview and not be so shy and just kind of go for it. I feel like if you have confidence and communication, those are the two things. Oh, and, you know, also good grammar <laughs> and general computer skills, um, you know, texting nowadays, like all these acronyms and things like that. But like if you're going to fill out an application, you know, fill it out properly. Um, but that's it. Communication, confidence and the ability to, you know, show up and and start start somewhere because if you actually go out and start, then you you have the you open up so many doors for yourself. But getting out there and just you know making it happen and not being so uh, kind of being humble to where you start. You know, uh, we have a couple of front desk agencies that used to uh, front desk agents that came from fast food restaurants um, recently, and they're awesome. They, they didn't know that they could work in a hotel and they just, you know, they were looking for something else. They kind of just landed here and they're great. Their customer service is amazing. And, you know, it's open to anybody and just starting off somewhere and getting out there, I would say. That's awesome. And then same question for Dara. <clears throat> Yeah, um, oh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? I was, uh, I, was, I, was, I, was I was concentrating on that. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, so what final advice do you have for the educators who are preparing students right now to enter this industry? You know, I mean, so many of you guys on here have some CTE skills. And it, it's really, if you've got a student in your class, they're, they're obviously there for a reason. Um, you know, give them that push. Give them that push to join something. Um, 
you know, sometimes just trying to be honest with the student. I know I've had to be honest with some of my seniors who are, you know, they're, they're phenomenal. You know, the world is their oyster and they're like hyper confident. Humble pie is a, is a great thing to eat in your youth. Um, it, it gets you a, a starting place. And so I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, align with LaFleche here. It's, it really is just get started. You know, everybody wants to focus and, and especially the kids these days with, you know, all the, all the distraction, right? They, they you know, I, I, I you know, they, you, you, you can be on Facebook and see the Kardashians and see these billion dollar lifestyles, but it's like, you're never going to get there if you don't start somewhere. And they all want to be, they all start with the end in mind and like they are there. And, you know, it's not working for Amazon. That's going to get you to become Jeff Bezos. It's going to be working in the mail room and then slowly working somewhere else and, and, and taking multiple positions and a lot of opportunities that are going to get you to a great successful place. So it is just start where you can, because the fact of the matter, the sooner you start, the further you'll go. And that's, that's just a proven fact, especially in hospitality. It's, it's a, it's a big industry and it's forever growing and it's great. And Christine, yes. Um, I, I think for me, not just for the educators, but also for your students, network, network, network. You know, I know we're, we're, we're educators and I know that as the, I am not exactly sure how the networking works, but try to network and, you know, attend like events that are, let's say here in Orange County, this Asian Business Association of Orange County, because you'll never know who the people you're going to be meeting during this time. Uh, you know, and this might be people that might be assisting you and giving you some, I, I don't know how it works, but maybe grants or sponsorship or maybe some even scholarships. I know some organizations does scholarships as well too, but I think uh, if we can get the, the students to start networking as early as now, um, even start us volunteering on any of the events that are happening, not just on the school level, but also on the outside level too, because there's like the city always have like a lot of events but volunteering is a good way to start networking. So, for me. Well, this was awesome. I definitely want to thank all of you all um, for joining us. Um, and um, a teacher asked, does Great Wolf Lodge hire high school students? Yes, they do. Um, I did share and I will share again their um, recruiting link. Um, it is in the chat, um, but I will share it again in the teacher information packet. Um, and then before we go, for those who are still, um, who just joined us and have not heard the great news, Vitalink has officially relaunched. We have a new logo, new website. So you can definitely check everything out on our new website. Um, we have updated, let's see. Yes, I did it correctly. Okay. Um, we do have an updated website where everything is just one click away. Um, so you can check out all of our programs. Um, in relation to our academies, competitions, you name it. And then if you have new ideas that you want for your students or a new pathway day for your students, um, feel free to bug my senior director, Ms. Netta. She is here with us. Uh, you can email her all your ideas and I know that um, our team will jump into action to definitely do that for you. And then, um, perfect. Um, so if there's any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, other than that, I did share the evaluation link in the chat as well. Um, educators, please take five minutes or less to fill that out. Um, your information and suggestions definitely helps me uh, and my team find more industry reps like these for you. Um, other than that, industry professionals, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I know that the teachers truly appreciate your words of encouragement and advice, and we hope to see you all again in our future events. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.